Are you ready to unleash your psychic powers and predict the future? Look no further than precognition. <laughs> Thank you for joining me here at Tantrum Math Studio D. I'm Kevin Delp. Precognition is a game for two to four players. It takes about 60 minutes to play. It's published by Ludonaut, and they sent us this copy to review. I'll give you a quick overview of the game in this video and then share my thoughts. I'll be explaining the competitive game, but you can also play precognition in a team mode or co-op mode. Please take a moment to like this video. It really does help out the channel. In Precognition, you'll be in charge of a ship that's packed with all the stuff you need to save humanity. On board, you'll have doctors and protectors to help you on your journey to save the humans. A big part of the game is your deck of cards. With three different groups of cards for each of the seasons, you'll have to choose the right ones throughout the game to come out on top. In the middle of the table, there's a river and a progress token to track the rounds. Here's a quick overview of the game. A big part of precognition is this new dual select system. Players are going to have to choose their cards wisely, but the goal is simple. Save as many humans as possible and become the ultimate savior of humanity. But beware, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. You have to gather resources like food, doctors, and protectors to prepare for the banes and the end of round events. They're going to try and ruin your day. The game is played over 12 rounds, and each round is filled with three phases, decision, action, and maintenance. During the decision phase, you'll draw and choose cards like a true fortune teller. In the action phase, you'll activate your cards and use your powers to gain resources, and during the maintenance phase, you'll manage your banes, heal contaminated humans, and move forward on the Great River. Every three rounds, it's the end of a season, and it's time to feed the healthy humans. Make sure you have enough food for everyone. At the end of the third season, after feeding the healthy humans you have saved, you'll count them up. The player with the most healthy humans wins the game. But in the case of a tie, the player with the most healthy humans and contaminated humans wins the game. Now, if players are still tied, they share the victory. But let's be real, who wants to share a victory? Let's look at the cards and machines a little bit more in depth, and then we'll get into the new dual select card system. On the cards, you have the cost in the bottom left. This is basically your humans becoming sick and placing them in sick bay. The top left is the benefit you gain, and if you meet the bonus requirements, you get the bonus too. Some cards have a bane number that will increase your bane level, which is not good. You'll be gaining food, humans, doctors, protectors, and batteries. Here's basically how the dual select system works. You are going to have access to four cards, two in your hand and two in front of you. You choose one of those four cards and place that above your ship. Then you'll choose one of the two cards that are face up in front of you and place that above the player to your left ship. You might only have one face up to choose from and that's okay. Then you'll take the two cards that are left and place them underneath the ship of the player on your right. So the really interesting thing about all of this is that you have some control of what card you're gonna get in the next round, but not total control. To me, this is the mechanic that makes the name of the game precognition make sense. You are giving cards to your player on your right, and next round that player will be giving you a card that you have the option of activating. Sometimes you're looking to get a certain color, but there is a lot more to consider on those cards. What resources you might get or even the cost of the cards might be important. This is actually connecting to the machines in your ship that you could activate too. Now, during the game, you can gain batteries that you can assign to the different parts of your machines. Most of the base level machines give you benefits based on the cards played. These benefits are similar to the ones gained on the cards like humans, food, doctors, etc. The advanced game gives players more asymmetric advanced machines. Once powered, many of these will activate if the resources you received through your cards match what the machine wants. Well, let me move on to my likes and my dislikes. Okay, for likes, I really like the strategic balancing of getting the right numbers, like food, humans, doctors, protectors. I mean, you could get tons and tons of food, but if you only have a few humans, the food really is worthless in the end. 
I really like the machines on the ships too, especially the advanced ones. You won't be able to power all of them, there's so many. You have to decide what path you want to take and power the ones that will help your strategy for that game. I like that the game sort of ramps up its difficulty throughout the game. The river tiles are revealed during the game and give you benefits at the beginning of the game, and then there are some pretty hefty costs nearer to the end of the game. I like the precognition mechanic, that dual select system mostly. Um, can I give the cards to my neighbors that don't help them as much and will hopefully help me? Uh, there have been times where I know I'm going to be getting a certain color card from my neighbor because I gave them cards that are both the same color, but then when I draw cards from my deck of cards, they weren't the color I was looking for that would help me match the cards that I gave, so there's definitely some chance involved there. Here's my dislikes. Let's be real, trying to explain the dual select system can be a bit like trying to explain a math equation to a toddler. It takes a bit of time for people to fully understand it, but once you get the hang of it, it's actually pretty cool. The game does have a lot of moving cards around the table, but that's all part of the fun of precognition. Now as for the theme of the game, it's sort of a mixed bag for me. I mean, saving humanity, noble goal. But getting food to feed the humans, getting doctors to heal the humans, moving them to sick bay can sort of feel really repetitive. But that's just me. Others might find that really engaging. What I do find more interesting is the card play itself and the machine activation. All in all, it's a game that's worth checking out, but it's not for everyone. Precognition combines elements of strategy, decision making, and resource management. All this can be a little bit of a brain workout, but I really enjoy all of that. It may it might appeal to a wide range of board gamers, but specifically those who enjoy strategic gameplay. So players who enjoy carefully planning their moves, thinking ahead, outmaneuvering their opponents, they're gonna likely enjoy the strategic elements of precognition. Number two, decision making. Players who enjoy making important decisions that can affect the outcome of the game will likely enjoy the dual select system and the choices that come with all of that. And number three, Resource management. Players who enjoy managing resources and making the most of what they have will likely enjoy the gameplay in Precognition. So if that sounds interesting to you, then check out Precognition from Ludonaut. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. And as always, please like and subscribe.